Hello everyone. Information box ticket lifestyles brings you today mycology topic on Candida gallbladder. But before starting this video don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you for supporting. Let's see the table of content. First we will understand what is Candida gallbladder. Its habitat, morphology, pathogenesis, viral inspector, clinical manifestation, laboratory diagnosis, treatment and prevention and control. First let's go through what is Candida gallbladder. Previously known as Tololopsis gallbrata, Candida gallbrata is a member of the order Monolales, family Cryptococci and class Fungi imperfecti. One of the most prevalent species of Candida, Candida gallbrata, coexists common simply with its human host. In healthy people, it does not result in illness. However, it has been shown that it can also lead to candiasis in those with underlying illnesses that have immune system suspension including as HIV, AIDS patients, diabetics, chemotherapy patients, organ transplant recipients and patients undergoing inpatient surgery. As a result, it is recognized pathogenic candidal species that causes candiasis infections in hosts with compromised immune systems. It frequently results in urogenital tract infections and systematic infections when they enter the circulation, particularly in people with impaired immune systems. Currently, Candida gallbrata is the second or third most common nosocomial cause of systematic and superficial oral, esophageal, vaginal or urinary candidal infections. As all, amphotericin B or flu cytosine are all effective treatments for Candida gallbrata infections. Let's learn about the habitat of Candida gallbrata. It is mostly found in human hosts but may also be found in a variety of situations. They frequently exist as typical microflora in the gastrointestinal tract of animals. Additionally, it has also been isolated from the oral cavity, genital urinary tract, alignmentary tract, and respiratory tract of human host. Morphology of Candida gallbrata It is a non demorphic species that only has a little blastoconidia in contrast to other candidal species that are demorphic in nature. It is the only species of Candida that does not produce pseudohypha at temperatures over 37 degrees Celsius. The blastoconidia of Candida gallbrata are relatively tiny, measuring just 1 to 4 microliter as opposed to the 4 to 6 microliter of blastoconidia of Candida albicans. When Candida gallbrata colonies are isolated on Severus dextrose agar, they produce glistening smooth cream colored colonies that are very tiny in size but yet resemble those of other Candidal species. In contrast, to Candida albicans clonies, which are green to blue green, Candida gallbrata clonies on Chromo agar, a distinct media for Candida species, trade clonies that are pink to purple. In contrast to other Candida species which have a diploid genome, they contain a haploid genome with tiny RNA components. Kindly show your support to this channel by subscribing. Pathogenesis of Candida gallbrata Despite their relatively low pathogenicity, their isolation from different patient samples suggests that they play a role in the addition, colonization and development of candida-related illnesses. Its poor virulence and pathogenicity have been linked to the absence of laminal, fibronectin and pseudohypha production as well as addition receptor proteins. Although the immune system's defenses against Candida gallbrata are poorly understood, it has been established that these species cause systematic candiasis and candiamia in humans. Viral inspectors In order to bind with the adhesin receptors on the host cells, adhesin factor to epithelia and endothelia cells has been linked to fungus hydrophobic cell surface. 
However, compared to other Candida species, its adhesion parameters are also modest. Candida galbrata generates for less protease than Candida albicans, according to data on protease synthesis. Phenotypic switching has been detected on Candida galbrata, which allows it to switch cloning phenotypes without affecting the genotype of the species, which has been associated with the virulence of its virulence among other Candidal species. Now let's learn about the clinical manifestation of Candida galbrata. Superficial infection Orophenigeal, esophenigeal, and vaginal candiasis has all been linked to systematic mucosal infection by Candida galbrata in HIV, AIDS patient, and other immunocompromised individuals. Acute pseudomembranous candiasis, sometimes called oral trust, is linked to orophenigeal candiasis. It manifests as systematic erythromatous forms and is the earliest indicator of HIV infection and AIDS progression. The spread of the illness from orophenigeal lining is linked to esophenigeal candiasis. Common females, pregnant females and diabetic vulvovaginal candiasis is linked to mild to moderately severe candiasis. Candida infection in the urinary tract, commonly known as candiasis urea, affects hospitalized patients with invasive catheter. Those with diabetic mellitus, the elderly, and people who are weak and taking antibacterial treatments. However, Candida galbrata is not associated with complex hematogenous infections of the urinary tract. Next is systematic candiasis. Candida galbrata alone causes systematic candiasis. However, in people with weaker immune systems, dissemination has been discovered in the circulation, particularly in patients who have undergone bone marrow transplants and long-term hospitalization. It has been connected to long-term use of fluconazole, antifungals, and antibacterials. It spreads to other organ systems and results in the blood infection known as candiamia, which is accompanied by lingering fever, descending health, and resistance to antifungal medications. Candida galbrata often causes fungemia. Now let's see the laboratory diagnosis of Candida galbrata. Specimens are swab, respiratory wash, vaginal swabs, and blood. Staining and microscopic examination. KOH wet mouth is used to distinguish one candida species from other candida species. Cultural examination. On several dextrose agar, candida galbrata grows in clonies that are smooth, glossy, and cream in color, similar to other candida species but smaller. Candida galbrata develops clonies on chromo agar, a distinct media for candida species that are pink to purple in contrast to candida albican clonies which are green to blue green. They can also be cultivated on bacterial blood culture to test for fungus hemolytic properties. Contrary to other candida species, which may assimilate a variety of carbohydrates, Candida galbrata can only ferment and absorb glucose and trihalose. Molecular-based tests Comparative chromosomal DNA study to recognize and distinguish between various Candida species and strains. Polymorphism in restriction fragment length Chromosomal molecular weight by dividing the chromosomal strains into distant bands for strain identification using pulse field gel electrophoresis. Candida galbrata strains show electrophoretic cryotyping EK patterns with 10 to 13 bands. DNA probing and random amplified polymorphism. Next is treatment for Candida galbrata infections. Topical polyene medications such as nistinin, amphotericin B, chlorotrimazole, triazoles, Intraconazoles and fluconazole are used to treat orophenigeal candiasis in HIV AIDS patients. Fluconazole, etraconazole, and intravenous amphotericin B are treatment for 
esophenegyl candiasis, butoconazole, mecoconazole, and cotrimazole have high antifungal action for, whereas triaconazole, itraconazole, and ectoconazole have moderate activity. Fluconazole is ineffective in treating vulvar vaginitis. Amphotericin B or fluconazole are used to treat the symptoms of candiasis. Amphotericin B, including candiamia, is the gold therapy treatment for systematic candiasis. Low dosage of fluconazole are also beneficial. Lastly, prevention and control of candida calibrata infections. For patients with candida urea infection, stop catheterization. Hospitalized patients receiving primitive antifungal therapy. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much.